Do what? Coming. You shall not pass! That's nice. Hello there, good people. Hi, Jason with Green Country Agriculture here. And hey, using that pipe cutting tool, man, it makes making these collars really, really quick, really easy. Look how straight that cut is. It's awesome. Unfortunately, the project I've got coming up next, yeah, I'm not going to be able to use those two and a half inch pipe cutters for because <laughs> it's going to take something bigger. Let me show you. This is 4 inch PVC pipe. Alright, now I must admit this is a bit of over engineering. What I'm going to do with that 4 inch PVC pipe is something that you could do with just a plain old used 1 quart plastic yellow oil can that you'd use to you know, refill the oil in your car. But I like doing things the hard way. So today I'm making moth traps out of 4 inch PVC pipe and well, I'll show you what we're doing. Alright, so I got the Sawzall on the very lowest speed setting. We're still going to have to do something to hold this pipe steady. So, let me go see if I can find a bungee cord or two. Yep, I think that'll do the trick. Okay, well I have a variety of different goodies here. We put those to the side. These bungee cords come in handy for something. This pipe steady with them. Here's one. This is like the watermelon challenge with PVC pipe. There's three. Hopefully that will hold it fairly steady. Alright. Now we use the lowest speed setting on the saw. Because that will give us the most amount of control. We'll set there on our line. Yeah, it's a little rough. It is a little rough. But I think it'll work. A couple things I need to add to this. It would be, of course, some ink caps. Like so. So far, so good. 
And I do still need to put some pipe sealing compound on these to, to lock them up. So I have my end caps, piece of sandpaper. Eye hooks, some wild honey colored yellow spray paint. All right, let's head on into the workshop and finish this project up. Okay, so here we are. We've got some sandpaper, we've got some eye hooks, we've got some wild honey matte finish spray paint, and of course, we've got our enigmatic four inch tube with ink caps on either side. Now, after I get done with the sanding and the painting, We'll go ahead and do the ceiling, and it, I might install the eye hook now, I guess. Yeah, I may as well. Get an eye hook out of this package here. It's already got a little point on the end of it, so it doesn't really need much. Just Push down into the material and a twist or two to get it started. Maybe more than a twist or two to get it started. There we go. Okay, we're going. We're going. We're going. We're going. All right, we'll finish that off with a little bit of silicone sealant, and it'll be ready to go. All right, let's put this down here where you can see what's going on. I can't lock this in the vise, so I'm going to have to come up with another means of holding it steady. You know what, those bungee cords worked so well, so well before, I think we'll keep on using them. in place we're going to take oh let's see here how about this piece of two by four and we'll anchor it to the vise take your bungee cord slide it around the end there and the other end over here that looks good do the same thing on this side bungee cord and there we go. That'll hold it yeah, mostly steady. Close enough for government work, I suppose. What we want to do is put a one and one eighth inch bit hole through here. If you watch this, watch me for a while now. You're probably familiar with seeing the one and one eighth inch bit, the spade bit, and it's kind of wobbly. So let me do something to fix that. Apparently, it was crooked going in. Okay, there we go, that's better. Alright, we're just going to want to put that up here in the top. Is a four inch piece of PVC pipe or a piece of four inch PVC pipe cut to a six inch length with a ah, with a plug at the bottom, plug at the top, the high hook to hang it from, 
and a one and eighth inch hole right there. We're just going to scuff this up with our sandpaper. Roughing up the sandpaper should provide us with a surface that our spray paint can stick to. And that'll be the next step. Is giving it that nice squash blossom yellow. So there we go. A nice roughed up surface. Keep the paint off stick to that. Yes, that's a chicken feed sack. Yes, there are chickens around here somewhere. No, I don't usually show the chickens because that's not really part of the main focus. They're more like pets than actual livestock anymore. We only have three of them left. Hawks, foxes, raccoons, weasels, possums, crackheads, everything wants to eat chickens. You know, all you kids out there that want to play with spray paint, this is a constructive use. Use it to make something. Don't use it to destroy things. Alright. There's that spray paint. Matte Wild Honey. It's a nice yellow color. Take this out in the air. Whew. Starting to get a little, little bit fuzzy headed with that spray paint here. Let's take this outside so you can see what it looks like. All right. Well, folks, here it is. This is our very first offering of the Mark 1 Mod 1 Vine Borer Moth Deterrent System. It's a moth trap. And the way it operates is pretty simple. We take this and we hang it from a pole near a squash plant, like the one right, here, right down here at my feet. And we fill it halfway up with a combination, or halfway from the bottom to the, the hole, anyway, with a combination of water and molasses, half water and half molasses. Now, since the squash plants haven't started to flower yet, I don't have any squash flowers to show you, but once the first male squash flowers appear, you pick a male squash flower off, or two male squash flowers off, this is before the female squash flowers show up, and you take them and you squish them a little bit and pop them into the hole. The pheromones released by the male squash flower should attract the moths to this general vicinity. They see the yellow, they smell the sweetness of nectar, well in this case molasses and water, and they go inside to investigate. And they don't come out. Now I know a system like this has been used successfully for coddling moths in fruit tree orchards. Hopefully we can make it work for vine borers as well. Maybe we can find a way to get it to work for cabbage moths, possibly even the cutworm, the black cutworm moth, if I can figure out what they're attracted to. And uh, 
end problems with pest predation from moths and their larvae. Okay, now we've given our paint some time to dry. Got our body of our moth trap here. Of course our plugs. A little bit of epoxy. This bit we've already attached a piece of twine to. Doesn't take much epoxy, just a little, little dab will do you. That in place very nicely. We've got our pipe cement. Got the other half. So I'm going to apply a good little coating. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, that's all I got for you today, good people. As always, if you found the video informative or entertaining, please hit the like button. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. Please subscribe to the channel, share this video, bang the notification bell, and good people, I will catch you next time.